Hello, welcome back to my conspiracy theory intuition on my channel, I'm your favorite digital creator Hasike. Next to the Illuminati, of whom they are closely associated with no other society has spawned more rumors and allegations than the Freemasons. Ostensibly a fraternal organization devoted to charitable deeds, civic obligation, brotherhood and the betterment of the individual, Freemasonry has wielded a considerable amount of power over political, economic and social spheres over the past 300 years. How then did this strange amalgamation of disparate men, rooted in obscure ritual, pageantry and secrecy, come to be known and reviled as the architects behind numerous revolutions, wars and social changes? The institution of Freemasonry describes itself as, a beautiful system of morality, veiled in allegory and illustrated by symbols. Such a description is both highly suggestive and while open to interpretation, seems to pose no immediate threat to the general population other than a collection of bizarre symbolism masked by a frequently transparent veil of secrecy. Both the rituals and doctrines of Freemasonry have been openly published, and accessible to even non-affiliated parties. In fact, in comparison to the vogue in which Freemasonry swept throughout Europe and America from its early foundings up until the first half of the 20th century, Freemasonry, which today only numbers approximately 2 million members in the U.S., a far cry from their heyday of the 1960s where membership reached close to 5 million, with numbers predicted to drop considerably in the next 20 years, seems an almost archaic and outdated throwback to a period of elaborately costumed galas and men's-only meetings. Hardly worth serious time or consideration. There has been considerable parallels and a mutually beneficial historical relationship between Freemasonry and the Illuminati. Virtually all of the founding fathers of the United States were indeed Freemasons, as has been ably documented elsewhere, in fact virtually all presidencies have either been manned by Masons or included key cabinet members who were affiliated until the presidency of Abraham Lincoln, whose assassination is still subject for much speculation. And the influence of the Illuminati bears a striking resemblance to the U.S. Constitution and Bill of Rights. Coincidence. Or is the institution of Freemasonry a training ground of sorts for Illuminati candidacy? As I mentioned in the introduction, unlike the clandestine nature of the Illuminati, Freemasonry may be the classic overt secret society. Membership is open to all males, 18 years of age, joining of their own free will and professing a belief not only in a supreme being, and that definition is very loosely defined, but a belief in the betterment of the individual and society. All that is needed is the sponsorship and recommendation of at least two members of a Masonic Lodge. With a highly visible advertising and PR campaign in recent years, some of which knowingly nods at their mysterious and conspiratorial reputation, in a last-ditch effort to find new candidates from younger generations, most of whom probably find the structure and right of the institution hopelessly dull and corny, Freemasonry is hardly the elusive and elite society whispered about in conjunction with the magnates and leaders of bygone days. If anything, it may be compared to a shell of its former influence and glory. Yet sometimes shells can hide some very strange ghosts, indeed. Like barnacles attached to the hull of a boat, Freemasonry and the Illuminati may be inextricably linked. How this influence came to be, is another story altogether. The Origins of Freemasonry The origins of Freemasonry, as Masonic apologists and authors are so fond of repeating, are forever lost to the sands of time, thereby grafting a highly dubious insinuation of ancient legacy upon the history of Masonic craft. How and why these mysterious legacies o fanciant pedigree are so integral to Freemasonry may be largely a result of an unconscious need to equate longevity with relevance, a notion discarded with the sudden rise of success of institutions such as McDonald's or science fiction movies in the immediate years following World War II. Whatever the case may be, the first organized Masonic activity is generally held to be founded on June 24, 1717 with the assembly of the First United Grand Lodge of England. Prior to this, there were loosely organized guilds of what has come to be known as, speculative masonry, that is, loose affiliates of like-minded individuals forming a mutual aid society modeled after the stonemason guilds of the 13th and 14th centuries, in whom they found an ideal allegory for non-denominational religious beliefs and the interpretation of biblical parables as metaphors for both the, universal brotherhood of man, an idea none too popular in still pre-Lightenment times, and historic illusions. Some of these guilds have been proven to be in existence as early as the 16th century, during which time the stonemason guilds had been officially abolished by Archbishop Thomas Cranmer, leader of the English Reformation, in 1548, but it wasn't until at least 150 years later that these guilds met to form a unified front. Over the next 70 years, Freemasonry began to grow considerably among all walks of life throughout Europe, petitioning as it did a relatively egalitarian ethos of brotherhood, justice and labor. 
As the popularity of Freemasonry grew, so did the need to formalize established constitutions, dictates and most famously, their degree structure and rituals. Space permits us from delving at all into the structure of these ritual or degrees, other than to state that they are rooted in biblical, classical and Kabbalistic symbolism and historical allegory, including the introduction of the myth of the Knights Templar as introduced in Chapter 2, the meaning of which is revealed through successive degrees. As the popularity of Freemasonry migrated throughout both Europe and the New World, many of the leading ideologues of the time became enamored of its tenets, which held that the equality of all men was indeed a demonstrable fact. Frenchmen such as Jean-Jacques Rousseau, Voltaire and Montesquieu, all leading figures of the Enlightenment whose philosophies would have an inestimable influence on the formation of the American Constitution, were confirmed Freemasons, as were American founding fathers such as Benjamin Franklin, Thomas Jefferson and George Washington. In order to place the popularity of such secretive organizations in context, we should take into account that such movements served a two-fold purpose, the first is to provide a relative harbor where such ideals could be championed and discussed openly without fear of reprisal from reigning political ideologies who saw egalitarianism as inimical to their very structure. The second is that of a social mechanism. Much like today, even intellectuals needed a place free of judgment where they could relax and enjoy the fellowship and camaraderie of like-minded individuals. One drastic, if relevant, example would be the infamous Hellfire Club of Sir Francis Dashwood, of which Benjamin Franklin was known to be a member of, a libertine society in the 18th century, consisting of both British aristocrats and commoners alike that was said to harbor secret services of devil worship, although in all likelihood, this was just a colorful and poetic metaphor for perpetual drunkenness, as opposed to legitimate satanic practices. As both the ideals and the popularity of Freemasonry continued to filter throughout both continents, so did its interaction with both increasingly progressive thought as well as existing Hermetic and Rosicrucian organizations, both of which shared common philosophical backgrounds. The need for a more inclusive attitude as well as allowance for diversity Ophopenian and ritual faced the various Grand Lodges throughout Europe and the Americas. Their decision was to establish a strict guideline of observance, practices and ritual lore in which those outside of its pale, such as lodges which chose to allow female participation, bore the stigma of being known as irregular, or illicit masonry. Some customs, such as those of Prince Hall masonry, which developed among freed slaves in the late 18th and early 19th centuries, were permitted as separate but recognized Masonic entities by Grand Lodge edicts. However, those who continued to operate, at times clandestinely, as illicit Masonic observances were the subject of outright hostility and vilification. And it is to these illicit chapters that we must observe if we wish to see the shadow side of Masonry in action. Thank you for watching my video, please like comment, share and subscribe to my channel and turn on the bell icon to be notified whenever I drop a new video till next time. Bye.